Hi, we're down in the workshop at Kramer's Piano Shop. This shop here is where we do everything to pianos, uh, from total restoration to reconditioning to uh, you, you name it, we do it. This particular piano that I'm pointing to, it's underneath the blankets. We keep them covered up because the dirt in the area. Um, this is a six foot five Kanabi Grand from the 1980s that is our piano that we're totally restoring for a good reason. I'm gonna turn it over now. This is Roger. Roger's been with us 33 years now. Roger Kovacs, he's uh, our expert rebuilder and um, well liked by all our clients and does a great job in our pianos. And Roger now is going to talk to you about the, the action here on why we're doing what we're doing. All right. Well, um, we have, uh, like uh, Dean said, we're replacing parts of this piano uh, because apparently they were exposed to a, perhaps a bad environment or maybe they were not made with the best quality. It, uh, this piano is approximately how old? Would 1980s. 1980s. And so there's many, many parts in the action, and we are replacing just about everything in this action, believe it or not. And so I, I guess uh, the, the reason is, uh, well, let me show you. Some of these parts are very sluggish. They're not returning. See how it's hanging up like that? So when the artist plays, uh, he notices that the action is very slow, you know, and not responding. And so, uh, in this case, uh, the right way to do it is just to replace everything. Uh, because this is a, a performance piano. And uh, there may be ways that if it was a lesser quality piano, we might try to treat the bushings uh, so that they are more flowing. Uh, but in this case, uh, things were not so good and we wanted to last a long time and be a nice piano for someone for a long time. So we're replacing all the parts. This is our hammer assembly, the hammer, the shank, the flange. And we are putting new hammers. Here you can see my new hammers that uh, we are gluing on. And uh, all- Everything has the precision, right, Roger? It's true. I, I even have a, uh, the jig here uh, because these hammers were bored a little bit loose and so I'm using this jigs to make certain nothing is moving and so they're in a straight line from the top and at the molding here and uh, as far as spacing we, we can do that as well and so this would be the shank and the hammer assembly and then uh, I go every other one as a comparison and so I we have this upper assembly is all new but also we have something called a whipping here and this is a, a major component in the action and the same thing with this the the parts aren't moving you know they're just kind of stuck there so it would make a terrible piano to play at performance level even if we treated the bushings and so we have because this piano is uh, not being made presently it's out of production from the 80s. It was a good, the Kanabis were a good, Mason Hamlet, Kanabi Chicken were a good piano. Uh, but they don't, uh, they're not making them, we can't buy the parts. Uh, so we have to construct the whipping to make it like this. So we buy a frame, a body whipping, and then we have to buy the heel so that we, we are composing, uh, something that's very, very uh, similar to, to the original one. And here the flange, so we have various parts that we have to put on this new piece just to make it uh, like the original. So there's a lot of time involved. There's repinning and gluing and positioning. And then after we get everything in place and everything's glued and everything is good, we have to regulate it, which is another uh, day's job or so. So it's a lot of work involved and a lot of um, know, experience is, is required here. And, uh, but we do this uh, often. And uh, so it's gonna turn out nice. We really believe it's gonna be a nice, a yes. nice performance piano when, when we're finished. And of course, uh, you know, we'll voice it and we'll check everything out and- uh, Explain to the customer what voicing is. Right. 
Well, see, when you buy hammers from the factory, um, sometimes they're not quite, you know, maybe one side is a little higher than the other. So we will resurface them lightly and then we'll have to fit them to the strings that it strikes all strings at, all strings at the same time. And then also we will actually sometimes treat the hammer with a chemical, uh, maybe to harden them, or we may even take our needles, which I don't have one handy here, and we would voice the hammer uh, in order to introduce air holes like acupuncture and to try to make a uniform tone with uh, the voicing technique so that the keys are even and pleasing to the ear. And so would you say, Roger, the harder the hammer, the brighter the sound, the softer the hammer, the more velvet? Uh, generally speaking, that's true. A hard hammer is going to produce a, a brilliant, hard, aggressive attack. Uh, and your soft hammer will have a very mellow sound. And uh, some pianos project in different ways. I, I've seen soft hammers come across real nice uh, if the piano is really amplifying things correctly. And then other times I've seen hard hammers that didn't sound so aggressive. Just the nature of the, um, the piano, how it's uh, designed and so many elements involved. Um, so everything is different. Everything is trial and error. On each piano we have to determine what's the best approach for that uh, piano. Uh, you're right. So there's, there's, uh, we have to, uh, you know, we, we examine things and we make the best decision uh, based on what we hear. Okay. Thank you, Roger. You're welcome. You're Appreciate welcome. your work. Glad to do it.